So, Larry, here it is. It's the third night of Hanukkah, and you're speaking at an event commemorating the exodus of Jewish refugees from uh, Arab and Muslim countries in which they lived for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Where's your family from? My family was uh, three generations in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, my grandfather came, was born in uh, Haifa and came into Egypt on my father's side. Uh, my mother's side was uh, Syrian and they came into Cairo as well. And uh, my, both of my parents were born in Cairo and I was born in Cairo. Did you have Michael Jackson's skin lightning cream or something? How come you look Ashkenazi to me? <laughs> I've always been very light, and so was my uh, so was my father uh, and my mother. Um, I don't know. Um, most most Jews in Egypt were were pretty light skin color. Uh, not not too many were dark skin. Three generations in Egypt, and uh, what happened during the Six Day War when Egypt attacked Israel? Um, <clears throat> I, I was living there at the time, and the, the war broke out, and we had uh, bombing in the background, and uh, we were watching with trepidation what was happening, didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, every 15, 20 minutes, we would hear a newscast indicating that the Egyptian army had downed tens and 20 airplane, and by the end of the day, uh, they had downed uh, more plane than the entire Israeli Air Force had. Uh, and, and you would hear the cheers when the announcement were made and when the bombs came across, uh, you would hear the people just be totally afraid and, and fear. And so uh, that's, that's what took place on the first day of the Six Day War. Did the Israeli jets make it as far as Cairo? Um, <clears throat> we did not see any, but I could certainly hear the bombing in the background. Uh, I lived in the heart of Cairo, and I could hear the bombing uh, for sure. But uh, I don't believe the jets made it into Cairo. Uh, they, may ha they made it into airstrips to take down whatever uh, planes were out there. Uh, as, as we later find out, that they took out the entire Egyptian Air, for Air Force out uh, before they uh, started the war. And that's effectively what happened, is uh, it took Egypt's ability to, to, to fly. You mean that the Egyptian uh, public relations, uh, military, and uh, uh, the g government PR, did they lie to the people? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, it was one story hearing it on the Egyptian uh, telecast and a different story that I was getting uh, by my ability to intercept Israeli news broadcast in Arabic uh, for about two days uh, before they garbled uh, the, the, the waves and, uh, and then I wasn't able to hear it but I was getting Israeli account of what was going on in the war and I was also hearing the Egyptian side and the Egyptian side was 180 degrees different opposite than what Israel was telling us. Now, three generations you must have considered yourselves Egyptians, did you? Uh, I absolutely did, however Egypt did not consider us Egyptian. Uh, my father was stateless. Uh, I happened to be uh, of Italian citizenship because of an acquired passport that my uh, maternal family was able to get. Uh, but I was born in Egypt and I was not considered Egyptian. And uh, believe it or not, as recent as about five years ago, uh, I happened to have a uh, meeting with the uh, Council General of Egypt and I brought up the fact that I was never allowed to be considered Egyptian. And he gave me some kind of an excuse that uh, uh, unless you can uh, uh, prove your Egyptian heritage going back further, I said, I'm three generations, and uh, it still was not an acceptable. How about your DNA that, go, that links you back to Moses? Well, <laughs> that wasn't good enough. Maybe pharaonic time, but not <laughs> Egyptian. <laughs> I see. Um, so during the war, naturally, in, look, in the United States, World War II, we had Japanese on the uh, Pacific Coast, San Francisco border, and, and the government was concerned that they would take 
uh, uh, that the, uh, the Japanese Americans might help show where the uh, where the Japanese bombers should come bomb, where the population centers were. So they took them and put them in internment camps. It wasn't a concentration camp. There was no uh, torture or anything. Uh, what happened during the Six Day War to your father? My father was picked up the afternoon of the first day of the war and was incarcerated uh, in an internment camp, in a, in a concentration camp for all intents and purposes. Uh, all the Jews starting from about the age of 16 uh, to the early 70s, male uh, individuals were, were picked up in, in a matter of two days and incarcerated. Uh, they were tortured. Uh, in those prisons, uh, they were uh, they were made to run in a courtyard barefoot on uh, broken glass, and uh, they were beaten up with uh, with palm leaves, uh, naked, uh, and and so they were. My father uh, was lucky enough to have a significant visible hernia, and so he was considered. Um, disabled and he was not tortured uh, but unfortunately he got to witness his friends being tortured. Uh -huh. Did they keep them in humane conditions? Um, no they did not. Uh, there were 70 men to a cell, a, a very small cell. How, how small? Uh, about 10, to, 10 by 15. How do you fit that many people in a cell only 10 by 15 feet? They were, they were basically piled up one on top of the other. They used to sleep uh, in, uh, in, in... Layers? In layers. In layers, intertwined legs and arms, and uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I did not see it, but th those are the stories I heard from my father. Mm -hmm. um, what, kind of relations, what kind of relations did the Jewish community have? Of course, there are very few living there now. Uh, very few, but what kind of relations did they have with their Muslim neighbors? Uh, in general, we, we had some pretty good relations as we were living with our Muslim neighbors. Um, we were respected, uh, we respected them, um, but in the background we were considered the enemy because of the rhetoric that was, um, that was being spewed by, by President Nasser. Uh, and so it was a constant uh, barrage of that, and uh, uh, and so that hatred was there. But for the but the people that knew us, um, and we knew them, we did not have any of these issues with them. Uh -huh. M most people are not aware that President President Nasser actually uh, immigrated into Egypt uh, members of the Third Reich from the uh, propaganda department of. Uh, uh, Hermann Goebbels uh, the, to teach pan-Arabist uh, anti-Semitism uh, through the Arab world and politicize anti-Semitism. Did, uh, did your family encounter or uh, were you uh, knowledgeable about uh, any Nazi presence in Egypt in the 1960s? Well, I did not know of any until later on I find out from my dad when he was in prison that there was Nazi presence in the concentration camps. Uh, Nazi guards? Nazi guards, but they were not acting as guards. They were there as teachers to the Arabic guards of how to mistreat uh, their prisoners, their Jewish prisoners. Uh, so there was at least one or two in the camp uh, that was there directing the, the Arab um, guards on how to treat the Jews. I understand that uh, Johann von Leer was given uh, an Arabic name. Did these uh, uh, German Nazis, did they have their, use their German names or did they seem to fit in somehow in the Arabic culture? As best as I know, uh, they, were, they were fitting in the Arabic culture. I did not know much about any of that stuff. My only encounter with it was a story I heard from my dad. So since 1979, March, we're coming on, it's the 40th anniversary, March 1979, of the Camp David Accords between President Sadat, President, uh, Prime Minister Begin, and Jimmy Carter. Um, there's peace, there's an official peace agreement. Israel uh, sacrificed the Sinai Peninsula, which it acquired in a defensive war, um, in exchange for peace between the people. Um, What's the attitude of the Egyptian people towards the state of Israel now after 40 years of peace? Well, 
it's a piece on paper. It is not a real piece. Uh, the Arab people hate the state of Israel. Uh, the the um, extremism that's that's propelling in the Arab world in Egypt on the streets of Cairo is such that uh, it's only a piece on paper. There is no real peace between Israel and Egypt. How about within the government? Is it a, just a government thing that the uh, the public has s so much uh, uh, Islamic anti-Semitism that it's it, that it's a part of their culture? But the government wants them to get along with Israel. What's the situation? As far as I know today, uh, there is none of that. Uh, it's clear that uh, that the anti-Semitism exists. Uh, it is uh, possible under the new presidency of uh, El Sisi uh, that you may see some better relations. But uh, the relations before that, after Sadat's death, and what transpired and Mubarak, throughout Mubarak's presidency, and uh, eventually the Muslim Brotherhood coming into power for a year before they were overthrown by El Sisi, uh, there was no love lost between Israel and Egypt. And in fact, many times uh, the embassy was under, the, the Israeli embassy in Cairo was under threat. Uh, today, maybe, maybe we will see something out of it. But who knows? Only time will tell. Uh -huh, but do the is Egyptian people have some kind of uh, affinity now for the Israeli people after 40 years of the cessation of hostility from the Israelis? Not at all. Uh, I can recount one story that I was told of a family, a Jewish family visiting in Israel, and a young boy telling his father, I see the Israeli um, flag flying in front of the Israeli embassy and the taxi driver took his hand and uh, took it across his throat like cutting the throat. Uh, so clearly uh, the people are such that they have just absolutely no regard for that peace treaty. It's just a peace treaty on, uh, on paper. Uh -huh. so uh, Yasser Arafat and Mahmoud Abbas have kept the uh, enmity of the Palestinian people against Israel up as a, uh, a negotiating uh, tool on one hand and also with the, with the prospect that there'll be another war. In other words, they don't want the Israelis to become an, a, 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 uh, an affinity, but in, in fact want to keep them as an enemy. Do you suppose that there's that uh, expectation that uh, Egypt may someday, and the, the Egyptian government and people may be uh, being prepared again to go uh, to war, to conquer uh, the Israeli territory. I, I don't think Egypt is going to take that step. That's a personal opinion. I think Egypt has suffered over the years. And I believe at the end of the day, uh, they will find a way to, to, to strike peace, at least between those two countries, uh, a real peace. But um, uh, I don't think Egypt will mount another campaign to, to go and uh, go against Israel. Of course, that's my personal opinion. Uh, it is also my personal opinion that I don't believe I will see true peace in my lifetime, unfortunately. You mean between Israel and any of her neighbors? And any of her neighbors, that is correct, between them. Well, what's it like for the Christians in Egypt nowadays, Coptic Christians? Well, uh, as far as I know, although I did not personally witness it, I've seen some accounts of uh, their being uh, humiliated, brutalized, and uh, discriminated against. Uh, many of the Coptic uh, uh, Egyptians have left Egypt and immigrated uh, to to. The United States and to uh, European countries, uh, they were the next group of people to be um, to be attacked. Uh, unfortunately, the fundamental attitude uh, in those countries has grown so rampant that uh, that's what rules today: fundamental uh, fundamental Islam and fundamental Arab uh, beliefs. So, so this is not just an, an issue about Israel. This is an issue about this is about Islam versus any other, any other religion in that country. Unfortunately, that's not what Egypt used to be. Certainly not the Egypt I knew when I grew up in it. Yeah. So when you meet Egyptians now outside of Egypt and, uh, and you mention to them that your family comes from there, 
What's the uh, what's the dynamic between you and uh, e- Egyptian Muslims? Um, I've had very little encounter with Egyptian Muslims here in the United States. Uh, on the f- few occasions that I have come across some, the, the, the dialogue is very friendly. Uh, most of these people have left Egypt because they don't like what's going on over there. Uh, certainly with the, with the Christian population, uh, it's a different type of relationship. And, uh, and we, uh, we encounter, uh, uh, you know, we, we recount our stories with one another and uh, what our lives were like back in the day.